welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. The first company is Sinclair Broadcast Group. This company is the second largest television operator in the U.S. after Nexstar. It owns and operates 193 stations covering 40% of American households. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company. They have a market cap of $1.6 billion and they're trading at $21.77. To get the shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, $73 million. We're gonna need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow. That's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that back to today's dollars. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So it's the money left over after operating a business minus the investments in your business. Investments are property, plant, and equipment. When you buy a factory or when you buy machinery, those are investments in your business. Free cash flow is positive if you're generating more cash than you're spending. And this company has positive, consistent free cash flow each year. So that looks really good. And net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's total revenue minus total expenses. This company has positive net income each year. In 2019, they had a pretty low net income relative to their free cash flow. This can happen for a number of reasons. They might have passed through a large non-cash item like depreciation or amortization or write-off of some sort, or they could have been borrowing. When you buy products or services on credit, you are actually receiving the products and not paying for it. You're paying for it in the future, but you're booking the expense onto the income statement, which is dragging down your net income, which can make it look low, but yet the free cash flow looks high. But in future years, when you actually pay for the product, your free cash flow goes down, which could make your free cash flow look low for that year relative to the net income. And their revenue looks really good. It grows every single year and it really jumps a lot in 2019. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $12 billion of debt. They pay 3.39% interest on their debt. And the cost of debt is 2.28%. And the way we figure out cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. They have 89% of debt in their capital structure, so they're really leveraged. Only 11% equity. The cost of equity is 12.5%, and the way we figure that out is using the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. The higher the beta, the higher the cost of equity. And their beta is pretty good, 1.32, so the stock moves a little more than the market. Their WAC is 3.38%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. They have so much debt in their capital structure, the WAC number is weighted much closer to the cost of debt. And we're going to use this number 3.38% to discount the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 8.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $10.2 billion. We divide that by 73 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of 139. They're trading at 22, so they're trading at an 84% discount. So it's a really strong buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying $96, so they're also saying the company's undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. It looks like it peaked around $60, and it's at its almost lowest point in five years at around $22. So it looks like it could be a great value. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a PE ratio of 34.0. The median in the entire market is 15.7 and the average in the entire market is 23.4. The way you calculate PE is stock price over earnings per share. The calculation for earnings per share is net income over shares outstanding. 
I like to see below 15, they're at 34, which means investors are paying $34 for $1 of earnings. They have a really good price to sales ratio of 0.4, the market median is 1.8, and the average in the market is 5.1. To calculate price to sale is stock price over sales per share. And to calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.4, so investors are paying 40 cents for $1 revenue. They have a good price to book ratio 1.1, the median is 2.4, the market average is 5.4. Calculate price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.1, so investors are paying $1.10 for $1 book value. Remember, equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. They have a weak interest coverage ratio at 0.9. The market median is 3.9. The average is 12.7. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT, which is your operating income over your interest expense. And they're at 0.9. I like to see above 2.0, so they cannot cover their interest payments, which is a little concerning. They have a weak ROE. The market median is 12% and the market average is 8%. The way you calculate ROE, that's net income over equity, I like to see above 20%, they're only at 3%. They have a good current ratio, 2.6, the market median is 1.3, the market average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, I like to see between 1.2 and 2, but 2.6 is good enough since they can cover their current liabilities. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Cumulus Media. Great Television, NTN BuzzTime, Nexstar, and Tegna, all in the same industry as Sinclair. And if Sinclair has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they all worse in PE at 34, the average is 10.5, but they're better in price to sales, price to book, current ratio, and ROE. Even though they have a bad ROE, the average is 2%. They have the highest amount of debt of all the companies, which is a little concerning. And their market cap is about average at $1.6 billion. They pay the highest dividend yield at 3.63%. To summarize, I have them trading at an 84% discount. Their ratios are pretty good, although they have a lot of debt, but they pay a high dividend yield. The second company is F5 Networks. F5's products enable the efficient management and delivery of computer applications across large businesses. In the past few years, it has added security products to its platform. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $7.7 .7 billion. They're trading at $123 a share, and they have 62 million shares outstanding. They do have positive, consistent free cash flow each year. Their net income also looks really good, and their revenue is going up every year, so their financials look really solid. They have no debt, which is great. They're 100% equity. The cost of equity is 9.85%, and their beta is a little under one, so the stock moves with the market. The discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows is 9.85%. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 15 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $13 billion. We divide that by 62 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 214. They're trading at 123, so they're trading at a 42% discount. It's a buy, according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 236. So they're also saying the stock is a really strong buy. Let's see where the stock has been trading in the past few years. So it looks like it's in a fairly tight range considering how volatile the market's been lately. It's peaked around 180 or so, and it seems like it's coming down. It could be a great value. It seems like a really solid company with good financials. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a decent PE of 18.0, that's stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15 for PE. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 
Price to book is stock price of a book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 4.4. They have a good ROE, that's net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 24%. So they are providing a good value to the equity holders. They also have a good current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, so they're right in that range. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Adobe, Blackberry, Diane Durham, Fortinet, Microsoft, Oracle, Palo Alto, Square, VMware, and Wix. All in the same industry as F5. And if F5 is the number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they are better in PE and price of sales. They're worse in price to book and current ratio. They're a little better in ROE. And they're doing obviously a lot better in debt than the average. Average is 41%. They're at 0% like Fortinet. And their market cap is much smaller than average because they're such big players in this industry like Microsoft, Oracle, and Adobe. They don't pay a dividend yield like most companies in this industry. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 42% discount. They have really solid ratios and their financials look good. The third and last company is Cigna. This company provides medical, dental, disability, and many other insurance types. It is the 13th largest Fortune 500 company in terms of revenue. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $62 billion. They're trading at $169 a share. And their financials are really impressive. Look at their free cash flow, $3.5 billion. It jumps up to $8.5 billion. That's a lot of cash. Net income is also really solid and growing each year up to $5 billion in 2019. They do have low margins, but their revenue is massive. It went from $40 billion to $153 billion because of the acquisition of Express Scripts. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $37 billion of debt. They pay 4.5% interest on their debt. Cost of debt is 3.5%. They have 45% debt in their capital structure, which means they have 55% equity. Cost of equity is 7.5%, and we figure that out using the beta. That's how volatile the stock is. They have a low beta 0.67, so the stock moves much less than the market. Their WAC is 5.7%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 133 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $131 billion. We divide that by 369 million shares. We get a calculated stock price at 356. They're trading at 169. So they're trading at a pretty significant discount a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them valued at $400 a share. So even higher than me. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. It looks like it's been up and down the price but it's sitting around 170 so it hasn't moved much in three years. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a really good PE that's stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15 they're at 12.2. Price of sales is really good as well. That's stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.4. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.4. They have a good interest coverage ratio. That's EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 3.9, so they can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 11%, so they're a little low in that category. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current debts and payables, so they may need to take on more debt. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Anthem, Benefit, CVS, and United Health Group, all in the same industry as Cigna. And if Cigna has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they are better than average in price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book. Although they're worse in current ratio and ROE, they're a little lower in debt. They're a little lower in market cap because three of the companies are bigger than them. 
They pay a really low dividend yield. The highest is CVS at 3.45%. To summarize, I have them trading at a 53% discount. They have really good ratios and their financials are off the charts. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies.